it started with the voices, that is the higher voices. But we heard them not above, but within. At first that was quite disorienting, as we were used to perceiving only outer communications, but very soon the inner location of the voices became normal. That is, it became normal for those of us who could hear the voices. At first there were just a few of us who could hear the voices, and we thought we were alone in this experience. But, gradually, as we gained the courage to share our experience with others, we found out that we were not alone. Also, somehow, we knew with whom we could share our experience. In fact, there were certain people that we began to recognize. We did not recognize their faces, or even their bodies. We recognize their feel. We later discovered that none of us understood the sensation of recognition by feeling. However, as we found the courage to share our experience with certain people, we discovered that we were all experiencing these voices in the same way. We also learned that there were some people with whom we could not share our experience. As one might guess, we could feel with whom we could share our feelings. We also discovered that we did not need to use our voices, or be in close physical proximity, to send or receive this feeling. At first, we could only experience this unique feeling with our physical body, which would have a certain knowing that that person, whether close to us or far away, was communing with us. We began to use the word commune rather communication because we felt each other as if we were one person. I know that this sensation will be very difficult to understand for people who have not experienced it, but I will try my best to explain it. At first, we had conscious experiences of a higher voice, but it was not above us. As I said before, this higher voice was within us. Having someone communicate with us, especially an invisible someone, from inside of us was disconcerting at first. However, we came to realize that this inner voice was very comforting and even helpful in our daily life. It was as if someone with a higher perspective was showing us the possible and probable realities that we were entering. I know that I lost you there, so I will explain the above statement more clearly. It was as if we all perceived an invisible, which means we only saw it with our imagination, fork in the road of our life. One of our choices of reality, symbolized by the fork in the road, would absolutely occur if we did not alter ourselves in some fashion. That was the probable reality. The other choice, the possible reality, was an alternate path that we could experience if we chose. At first it was disconcerting to have these myriad choices constantly entering our awareness, but as we grew accustomed to these inner directions, we found that our lives began to flow. Okay, now what do we mean by our life flowing? The best way to explain a flowing life is that we found that when we just let go of all the myriad choices of daily life and allowed this inner directive to guide us, we were much happier and could actually do more. In other words, instead of having to make myriad choices about our daily life, we only had two choices follow this inner flow or experience the resistance of daily life. In fact, when we chose to follow the flow, we did not experience the resistance that was normal before we followed the flow. It was as if we finally realized that there was an alternative to climbing that steep trail of daily life, alone. Until we chose to follow the flow, we did not realize that there was an alternative to our steep trail. And, most important, before we chose to follow this collective inner directive, we did not know how very alone we had been. We could remember how it was to feel so alone inside ourselves and even with a good friend or in a crowd of other people. In fact, other is a word that began to leave our awareness. As we followed this inner, collective reality, the concept of other became extinct. I can feel that I should also explain the concept of an inner collective reality. Before we began to follow this inner feel, we were alone within ourselves. Yes, we could share our lives through communication, which was usually about our work, our kids, or some other 3D activity, but it was separate people talking about separate lives. 
The interesting thing that we discovered when we merged into the flow, was that, even though we were still individuals, we were not separate. We were so united within the flow at the most inner levels of our consciousness, that the external package of our bodies were merely the seemingly separate encasement for our one being. At first this situation was a bit disconcerting for us because we had all had myriad lives on third dimensional earth. However, eventually we began to meet beings who had only had a few incarnations on earth or had only bilocated onto third dimensional earth while they kept their primary essence and consciousness on their starship. As we, the ones who had primarily identified ourselves as being humans from physical earth, merged with the ones who knew they had only bilocated to Earth, we all began to remember our own higher dimensional lives. We were not surprised to discover that many of us who knew that we had bilocated to Earth, were often from the same ship. As we all communed, we realized that some of us would return to our ship, others would move into the energy patterns of fifth dimensional Earth, and others would expand their essence enough to be both on the ship and on new Earth. New Earth is the name that we started to use for the fifth dimensional frequency of Earth. At first, most of us could not remember much about our higher dimensional lives, but we could perceive and communicate with each other quite naturally. Sometimes one, or a few of us, would phase out of our collective perception for a while, but they would usually return. When they returned they had great stories to share with us. Sometimes they would disappear because they had returned to physical or astral earth to assist in some manner. It appeared to us that they had only been gone for a short while, but when they returned, they told us how they had been on physical earth for a long lifetime, or on astral earth for a lesser time. Then there were some who had traveled to their ship or to one of the frequency levels of new earth. These return stories, as we called them, were very interesting. They told us how we could visit many different frequencies of New Earth and discover that each frequency was quite different. There was what they called, perceptual New Earth, in which we could perceive New Earth as if it was a movie. However, New Earth, as we eventually discovered, is actually an in-between frequency. This frequency of New Earth was more like an idea than a place. However, if a group could combine their consciousness enough to embrace that idea, they would find themselves interacting as a group on a reality that was highly adaptive to their thoughts and emotions. In order to remain in this adaptive new earth we would have to join into a group consensus that this version of new earth was real. Hence, even though that reality seemed to waver and change with every thought and emotion, it was a real reality. This adaptive new earth is where the group needed to remain in total consciousness calibration with each other or they would fall out of the experience. When they fell out, they returned to perceptual new earth. When they dropped out and returned to perceptual new earth, they could share their experiences with the other members of that frequency of perceptual earth. We must add here that perceptual earth was more like the astral plane of the fourth dimension in that it looked like a dream or something that we were making up. However, we were all making up the same reality and or having the same dream. It was because of the adventures of some of our friends, that we realized we were moving into some form of a new earth. We instinctively knew that we were experiencing this new earth, as we called it, because there was such a strong unity consciousness that constantly assisted us to better understand and accept our very unique experience. Our collective experience of releasing that which we had always known as real, and embracing an entirely different reality, greatly facilitated bonding into intimate relationships with our group. Some are friends, family and loved ones who were just physical, began having our same experiences but others thought that something was wrong with us and began to disappear from our life. These people were not having our experience, so it was very difficult for them to believe that what we were experiencing was real. I understand that the above statement can be quite confusing, 
So I suggest you think of our experience as if you were dreaming and found dear friends and family from your waking life sharing the same dream with you. In the same manner as when we were dreaming, once in a while we would wake up to find ourselves as a normal physical human. At first, this return to being normal was comforting. But eventually, when we returned to normal, all we could think about was returning to the higher dimensional feeling of our fifth dimensional unity. We must add that our guidance was not from above, behind, or in front of us, like our third dimensional guidance. This guidance was within us. Our perception of reality as an inner feeling, thought, idea, emotion, and or experience, was likely the most challenging part of our experience. Somehow, we knew that we were the first ones in. Hence, we often thought that we could not share our experience with anyone from our 3D, outer reality. Therefore, our inner boating became deeper and deeper. To make things more confusing to our third dimensional mind, everything in our journey was instant. Eventually, we had bonded so deeply that our joint consciousness led us beyond perceptual new earth, and adaptive new earth and into what we called Threshold New Earth. Just before we tried to enter Threshold New Earth, we came to an invisible energy field. When we came to an energy field, which we began to call a threshold, we began to realize that we had moved into a frequency of reality that was likely fifth dimensional. It was then that we're also told that New Earth resonated to the fifth dimension.